Across the UK, elite helicopter teams are saving lives every day. The rider's been thrown up over the bonnet of the car. Bringing the hospital to the roadside in a race against time. Do you remember what happened, Jason? These are their stories. Jason? 15 minutes, man. We're going to get you out. That's it. Big release. Come and give me a kiss if you want. Yeah. She's been an absolute star and very, very brave. All right, sweetheart. The East Anglian Air Ambulance has been saving lives from their base at Norwich International Airport for 15 years. I'm from Hungary. I come over to work with the East Anglian Air Ambulance around, on average, two days a month. My UK experience definitely helps me to be a better doctor and provide the best possible care for the patients. We've been to the moon and back, but we still keep drugs in glass vials, which means that even with the best of care and intention, sometimes they cut you. Do we have a plaster? <laughs> Good question. Hello, George. Yeah. Lorraine Way. Cardiac arrest on the golf course. The team have been scrambled to a golf course near Ipswich. Ambulance, Got a gentleman in our car park field over his car and responsive. Even in the helicopter, it'll take 20 minutes to reach the patient. Is he awake? No. Is he breathing? Is he breathing? We... No. Um, I understand this is uh, out on the golf course somewhere, or is it actually at the clubhouse? The patient is in the car park outside the clubhouse. Aim at the clubhouse and this. Cardiac arrest means that the heart is stopped, so a patient is essentially dead. The paramedics on scene reported to us that they had a rusk. Rosk means that the patient's heart is beating again, and that gives us hope that we can actually make a difference. Yeah, you can see the range. Golf course on the left, so that must be the clubhouse. Uh, oh yeah, ambulance in the middle of the car park, just by the driving range. Take off only one on the ground. When we arrived on scene, the paramedics were doing resuscitation and CPR. Here are chaps. Fifth patient. Which meant that the patient is back in VF uh, cardiac arrest. He uh, essentially died again. What's the uh, story? We found him unresponsive in the back of his car. A colleague and myself ran in, grabbed our defibrillator, put pads on. Uh, it decided it needed to shock him straight away, so it did that. And I proceeded with uh, CPR and mouth to mouth until the emergency services arrived. And we've turned up confirmed the VF. So two further 200 mil shots from us. Yep. Uh, Ross was achieved there. Yep. And then went back into VF. He's just okay. had five further shots. Um, and that's where we're at. Thank you. When a heart uh, needs several defibrillator shocks to, to restart again, that means that this is a time critical situation. Okay, ready, raise, lift, and over. Some of the patients we don't get to know as people at all. Our job is to focus on their problems and how we can help. Okay, let's give Gary a bit of space so he can attach the thingy. It's quite a challenge to cope with these situations. Good. So far, so... The team carry a cutting-edge piece of kit that gives mechanical chest compressions, and now it's the only thing keeping the patient alive. This is gonna be sick okay, let's do the rhythm check now. Okay. 
Yeah, confirm for you. Okay. Charging. Let's go. Everybody, let's go. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Clear, shocking. Okay. Continuing. During cardiac arrest, there's a danger of the brain being starved of oxygen. Peter makes a decision to intubate, to take control of the patient's breathing. So it's going to be all simultaneous, rhythm check, path change, and my intubation, okay? Let's go. I've got the tube. Tube is through the course, 22 centimeters at the teeth. We connect. Okay, do go back. Thank you for the shape. Let's go for rhythm check. Stopping. Rhythm. Is he in VF? Yeah. Okay, let's shock him then. Okay, so charging. Yeah, got it. Okay, everyone clear. Clear. Shocking. Okay. You good? Is there a there, there was a rhythm. There was a rhythm? Yeah. After the shock. Okay. It's 20 minutes in, and finally the patient's heart responds. You've got sort of an output. If you would be okay to give one milligram of atropine, please. Heart rate of 117. 117, yeah, that's better. So we've got blood pressure of 171, 108. That's nice. Hmm? Have you got anything? You want to keep this yeah, coming? Yes, yes, but it's getting weaker. The good news is short lived. It's just for. We're we going into VF again. Oh, Show me. Okay, shock, yeah. Shock. So shocking, clear. This gentleman had very short episodes of his heart returning to normal and then his heart stopped again, many times. All clear, shocking. Let's give an adrenaline, please. Right, back on there again, then. Not many people do survive these episodes, but it's your job, you, you, don't, you don't quit. Everybody stand clear, top of the bottom, shot. The patient has been in and out of cardiac arrest for almost an hour. To have any chance of survival, the team now need to get him to hospital. So guys, it's very, very unstable, so we should roll to its hitch. So once he's in, we should give one more milligram of adrenaline, please. Okay, rhythm check, that is VF. Hold on. Yeah, it is. Adrenaline's in, ready to shock, and it's clear, check, shock. Back on the chest again. Green button. Thank you. Yes. Ready. Yes. Hello. My name is Peter. I'm one of the doctors with this tangling air ambulance. And we're bringing you a patient by road. He's about 50 years old. He's had an episode of cardiac arrest, and he's coming in and out of cardiac arrest. I know it's quite unusual. The team continue to fight for their patient every second of the 12 minute journey. He's arrested again. Clear. Everybody clear. Shocking, shocking now. Many. 15 is shift. Six of them. Six shots. So we'll do a rhythm check when we arrive, and then we'll just take him in. If he has a rod, happy. If he doesn't. Despite all Peter's efforts, his patient's life is hanging in the balance. Crew of Helimed 85 are delivering their cardiac patient into Ipswich Hospital. He's had continuous CPR for over an hour. So let's leave, leave him on the autobus for now. So this gentleman is quite difficult. He's about 50 years old. He has short episodes of ROSC. He's quite adrenaline dependent. He's had multiple 
uh, shots. The original call time was about 90 minutes ago now. 9 0. Everybody ready? Ready, steady, slide. Yep. Pulse check. Pulse check. Can anyone feel a pulse? That's it, we have shot. Stand clear. Right, okay. I don't think I've ever experienced a cardiac arrest incident uh, quite like this one. Sometimes, despite our best efforts, it's, it's not enough. It's now up to the hospital staff to continue the fight. In the northeast of England, it's been a busy start to the day for Helimed 63. Dr. Dave Bramley and the team have just returned to base from their second emergency call out. Some days are absolutely non stop. You just have to keep going and get through it. You can't slack off everything you've got to do, you've got to do to a high level. The consequences can be huge. People are depending on us. It's an intense job and juggling family life around it can be very difficult. It's particularly hard for those of us with younger children, um, but somehow we, we get through, we manage. We're coming through that stage where uh, we're having to get up through the night and he's, he's been a good boy. Just filling full of food all day and he's just unconscious for 12 hours. That's enough. Those of us with older families have a fair share of dramas too. This is my daughter's GCSE results. <gasps> hey, sweetie. Right, go, go for it. See side out, ask. Uh, we could be there in about 12 minutes. Jay? Yeah. Okay, it's sad. That's all delicious. Sorry. or partial amputation of any limb. Such a life-changing injury. Speeds of the essence. Our main aim is to save that limb. Uh, the faster we can get to the patient, the, the more chance we've got. About five minutes out, Dave. Roger. That's wrong, Steve. I've got an ambulance now, 10 o'clock low, on that dirt track thing. Yeah, that's, that's going to kick up a load of fun. We'll just go in there and blow the shit all over the place. Yeah. Happy days. Looks like motocross bikes. Yeah. It's probably a pretty shitty wound. Yeah, stop waving, you need to run away, boys. It's stop no way. waving. Out, 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 that way. Oh, gonna fold there, I'm just gonna hold it here. Yeah, there's no load. Blow that away here. All the way, mate. I'll drop down a bit. Yeah. Keep that a bit. Uh, you're looking better on the left now, Jay. Everything's fairly settled. Down. Hello. Hiya, how are you doing? Hello, I'm one of the doctors with the air ambulance. I'm just going to hear about you, we'll get you sorted out. Got some cat on Yeah. We were just having a mess of good eyes, jumped on the bike, and he's just come over the jump a bit too fast, really. That was it. He just come down on the jump and think, I'm not going to make it. So he's right. kicked the bike away and yeah. landed on his foot. Right. Slow and steady so, on that uh, uh, Right. We're going to get you. Right. Listen, we're going to get you some medication. <laughs> Makes you feel pretty sleepy, pretty giddy. Air ambulance, Jim speaking. 
27 year old female stabbed in the head. Yeah. Breathe slowly on that. What's your first name? Kane. Right, Kane, just breathe slowly on it, mate. Stabbed in the head by a partner. Says there, uh, bleeding, spurting from the head. Yeah. Well, we'll then, get, uh, I'm going to speak to Andy first. I'm going to speak to Andy first. <laughs> yeah, I've got a report of a patient being stabbed in the head and blithe. Um, are you definitely going to be taking the patient you've got? Or? Stabbed in the head and blithe. Do we know a GCS? Yeah, we, yeah. we could move, Stu, uh, if we needed to. If you can get details. There's a stabbed head that's just coming through. We can top up analgesia um, and go. Um, I'll give you a show back then. We sometimes have very difficult decisions to make, uh, weighing up priorities. So in this case, we had the young man with a very nasty lower leg fracture versus a potential life-threatening head injury. We're going to concentrate on Kane, who was in front of us, whilst waiting for further information regarding the other job. Great. I'm going to get you something now, OK? Dave gives Kane some serious pain relief in the form of ketamine. Where's the doctor? Who's the doctor? Where are you? Where are you? Who's the doctor? I am. Am I losing my leg? No, you're not. No, you're not. No. Just put your arm through there. We're going to gently roll you over, all right? <laughs> Just bear with So rolling upwards this yep. way onto his leg. OK, we've not touched you yet. That's it. Roll that through there. There you go. It doesn't sound like it's a job for us, so just uh, remain on scene and deal with that patient. What was that? We well, not required. It doesn't sound like we. It was a relief to find that we weren't needed at the other incident, uh, so we could concentrate on Kane. To have a chance at saving Kane's foot. Got to get the foot pulled and realigned and get the blood supply back to it um, as quickly as possible. I'll just keep him nice and quiet there for now. If we go with straight traction down, the heels should be nice and strong there. So there we go. That's it. We'll get that sock through now. Okay, so we've not got a pulse there. We've got a white foot. If we can just rinse that down, can he? For now, we just need to try and close it and get that pulse back. Yeah, I'm Needs a bit of a top up there. Guys, just pull backwards gently. Yeah, you can think we're going to have a yeah, sharp coming in. Let's try that. We need a lot of traction on the heel now, and that'll cut. Right, let's see what that skin cover's like. It's better than it was. Yeah. Let me just. Mate, I think that's just tissue yeah. lost there. We're not going to get much better than that. Okay. We've got pink toes now. We've got pulse back. Yeah, it's good pulse now. Don't know why I'm holding my hand. We've got a sort of hand trip got a pulse back in the foot, so luckily it looks like the blood vessels haven't been severed. Uh, they were probably just very badly stretched or kinked over the bone. So the chance of him keeping the foot is now much greater. NS163, uh, Jamie, just an update for you. Um, so it has been fairly significantly off-ended. Uh, we have reduced it now. We'll be escorting them by road to the RVI. That's ideal, I'll uh, pre-alert them now, over. This is a very serious, very nasty injury. It's got a high risk of infection. The team have done what they can on scene, but Kane still needs urgent hospital care. Uh, thanks for all your help. Thank you very much. Thank you. In Newcastle, the Teesside Air Ambulance team have just arrived at the Royal Victoria Infirmary. 23-year-old Kane is under the influence of some serious pain relief for his severely fractured ankle. Martin! Martin! 
This is Kay, he's currently stable. He was on a cross-country motocross bike. He's gone over a jump, realised he was losing it, so pushed himself away from the bike. Landed essentially on his ankle, his foot was doubled back. The bone round. It, it'll need a good washout. It was a really gritty asphalt sort of sort of path. Where's my bird? The injury Kane had received is, you know, about as bad as it gets. You know, there's no guarantee that he'll be able to walk properly again. As the team prepare for their next job. Kane faces his first round of surgery to save his foot. The shipyard falling from the third floor to the second floor. Go ahead. Okay. It's an abandoned building, 15 year old male. Broken leg and the feet. That's what we see, Stu. We're uh, on route. We've just been deployed to another incident. Uh, sounds like a young male, so we'll get going. Thank you. Thank you. A busy afternoon on the hospital helipad means Helimed 6-3 has had to relocate to a nearby park. You do have to have stamina to do the job. Some days are pretty relentless. You just have to dig deep and get on with it. Right, happy in the back? Yeah. It's not just the Teesside team that have busy days. At their other base in Penrith, the crew of the Great North Air Ambulance's second aircraft, Helimed 58, have just returned from a job. You never know when the phone's going to ring next. So you have to try and squeeze essential jobs in when and how you can. So a pilot's work's never done. Don't tell my wife I can do this. The emergency calls come in at Teesside, 50 miles away. So our base can be quite a lot quieter, except for the wildlife. Yeah, I'm about to get stung by a wasp. So. <laughs> hey Rachel, I've got a job for you. It's uh, RTC, car versus motorcycle in Spenny Moor. is received over. Welcome to the middle of nowhere. When we're called to the motorcyclist versus a car, you're immediately thinking life-threatening injuries. In a remote area, the helicopter brings not only speed, but extra skills, and that can't be provided by the land crew. Two miles, which side of that little village is it? I think it's supposed to be somewhere along there, I think. It's right, 11 o'clock. We've got vehicles at 11 o'clock on the road. Uh, access. What about in the fields where the bales are here? Is this in the brown field, I mean, there is a gate in the corner. There is a gate in the corner, uh, you're right. Yeah, it might be a bit soft because of the earth. Uh, guys, I don't think there's any access there. There is in that other field on the other side. Going over. Okay. Just try not to uh, blow this door too much, mate. Otherwise, I'm fine, going mental. Want to check the ground? Yeah, if you could do it. Right, door's opening now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, you're on solid ground. OK, that's fully down now, Rachel. Exit to the 9 o'clock. Yeah, that's received. Five eight, Roger. Typically, uh, motorcyclists um, being driven to uh, the oncoming car. Right. And what's happened to the motorcyclist? Uh, the rider's sort of been thrown up over in the bonnet of the car. Well, I was coming this way and Sorry, the motorbike Graham, come around the bend and just head on, basically. Doesn't, couldn't have prevented it. I just had to stop, jumped out and went straight to see the bike, made sure he was conscious. But it was not a pretty sight, I can say that. Hi, yeah, I'm Rich. I'm one of the doctors from the uh, Air Ambulance. This is 46 this is year old Jason. Impact, Hello there. We're looking at probably about 45 minutes from nowhere. Do you remember what happened, Jason? That's fine. No. Do you know what day it is now? Jason, deep breath. Have you got any pain in your chest there? 
No. You're sweating. Is that so there? Both sides? Has he got a pulse in that hand? He didn't have. Yeah, and he's white everywhere. Jason is pale, clammy, with a rapid heart rate and a low blood pressure to the point where we can't feel a radial pulse. These signs confirm that Jason is in shock. He's bleeding into his abdomen and pelvis. You keep squeezing that, that fluid. Tell us when you're nearly done. With internal bleeding, the patient needs surgery to control the bleeding, so needs to get to hospital as soon as possible. Let's go. Done. Just squeeze it through here. Yeah. Don't let any air come below lower than there, OK? Giving fluids improves blood pressure, but it can't carry oxygen to the organs and it dilutes vital clotting agents. Right, I think speed is of the essence here. That's it, Stop. that's it, that's it. Jason, are you with us? Hang in there, mate, you're doing grand. All right, keep talking to us. Ready, steady, lift. Well done, Jason. The Great North is one of the few air ambulance charities that now carry blood. Um, Terry, have you got the blood there? A transfusion during the 15-minute flight to hospital could make the difference between life and death. We need to be high enough up to lift rather than slag so it won't drag on the stretcher. Yeah, yeah. Stop. Right, we'll get some blood going. We'll get you some painkillers as well, Jason. Has a 45-year-old male on board, high-speed motorcycle accident versus car. KO on the query, the spine, query, abdo and pelvis, and a right-sided fractured wrist. Uh, 5, 8, uh, 15, one, five minutes from now, over. Right, we're ready to go, yeah. Oh, it's going to be about 15 minutes. Can I give you a pre-alert, please? Trauma call. So, this should be um, red cells. Red cells. Oh, negative. Oh, negative. Expiry day. We're bringing in a 45, 45 year old male motorcyclist. He will be receiving blood and TXA en route. Bag number G096. G096 715-204-943J. And can you uh, activate the major hemorrhage protocol, please? It's green, red, good to go. Looks fairly pale, doesn't he? Yeah, very. Hang on. Two it? minutes. If you need to be loose, then that's fine. Need to be loose, mate. Right, let's put the other unit up, so this should be... Oh, negative. Right, oh, negative. G, G 0, 9, 6, 7, 1, 9, 2, 0, 4, 9, 7, 1, 8. Right, is that one done? Yeah. Ready? Yeah. When I was always desperate to be a doctor from when I was tiny. It is a tough job, but it's a really interesting job and it's a satisfying job. In the heat of the moment, you just go into autopilot you often don't have a chance to think, actually, this is somebody's child, somebody's husband. All right, Jason. Hi. We're giving you some painkillers and morphine coming in now. You've had some blood. Well done, Jason. Hi. We can see tragedy on a, on a daily basis. Just going to cover you over slightly. And it does make you realise you can't take anything for granted. I'll squeeze the rest of that blood in and then we'll stop. Uh, this is Jason, he's 45, high-speed motorcyclist versus car thrown from the motorcycle. Initially knocked out, um, chest has got reduced air entry on that right side, no radial pulse, initially palpable. He's got generalised abdominal pain, he's got pelvic pain. He's had two litres of fluid, some tranexamic acid and two units of blood. He looks a bit better now, he's had a bit of help. We did everything we could. The rest of Jason's care is out of our hands. With a few hours left on shift, Rachel and the crew leave Jason with a hospital team for assessment before he heads for surgery. We'll be ready to go to scan in about five to ten.
In Norwich, the East Anglian Air Ambulance team are nearing the end of a 10-hour shift. Today's my wife's birthday, which is nice. But I'm here, which isn't, but <laughs> doesn't matter. When I'm over in the UK, I do miss my wife very much, uh, but I love what I'm doing and it's very important and I wouldn't change a thing. We have a washing machine and a drying machine on, on base, which is quite helpful because we have a lot of kit which sometimes gets contaminated. Sometimes it's blood, sometimes it's vomit, all sorts of bodily fluids. We're getting near to the end of shift, so we're just yeah. tidying up around the base, um, ready for the next crew tomorrow morning to come in. No, no. Going out to get the aircraft in shortly, and then uh, we'll declare offline at seven o'clock. Hello, Anglia One. Yeah, no, we're just fine. Yeah. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks, Rick. Three car RTC plus a cyclist, no resources on scene yet. Accident is on a country road, right on the outer reaches of Helimed 85's patch, a 20-minute flight from base. Must be quite serious, is it? Because uh, it's quite a long way. It is in the back of nowhere. I was a gardener when I was about 19, and I can remember it very clearly, seeing helicopters flying over, and I thought, that's what I want to do. Learned to fly in the army, 17 years offshore, um, and now, most recently, into the air ambulance role. We're going to be landing sort of 20 minutes before dark. Yeah, I was lucky. Yeah. Pilot flying hours are highly controlled. If you get a late call, then you have to consider whether or not you can extend to the, the regulated maximum. At Brooks, it's late until 9 o'clock at night. At Brooks, till 9, okay. You need to be back in Norwich by 9, don't you? Yeah. They're commencing a gentle descent. This is the road. No, uh, road is right. uh, blue light's just in that tree line just below there, so it's that junction. Okay, tail's coming right. Got a gate there. Got the gate clock. in yep. yep. As information from the 999 calls are often limited and confusing, uh, it's, a, it's a job of the emergency services to, to assess the scene and the needs of everybody involved. Hello, this is Margaret. She appears to be the most injured of the three people. We've also got ladies, uh, a gentleman sat down here yeah, it's, and, it's a lady and a okay. child on there and they yeah. all seem to be OK. Yeah. So it seems that the neighbour and the husband of this lady is already at scene when we arrived, so she probably isn't very far from home. Margaret, here's the doctor. can you tell me how your breathing is? Not good. Not good? Do you have any pain anywhere at all? All my leg. My ankle is killing me. Yes. Okay. Your left ankle is killing you, yes? The pain in my left arm. Yes. And how about your chest? Yes. Okay. Take a deep breath for me. If I squeeze here, is it painful? Oh. Up here? Oh. 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 In the back as well? Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. <sighs> if you can hold on to that for another day. Oh. Oh. Yeah, oh. yeah. Just take nice and slow deep breaths. Oh. Okay. Just nice and slow. Oh. Okay. Can you give me this left arm? Your left ankle is most likely broken. That's what's causing the pain, okay? Is my arm broken at all? No, I don't think it is. One of the most important jobs that we have on scene is to relieve pain. Margaret, I have to stick a little cannula in your arm, okay? But it, it's going to hurt. Please do not pull your arm, all right? 
and pain relief sometimes reduces anxiety as well and that can help with breathing problems uh, especially for chest injury patients We should really get her out soon, okay? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Margaret, I'm going to lift uh, yes, your leg. Yes, get one ready. Okay. Right. Okay, Sprint can come on. Thank you. <laughs> Margaret, hold my hand, please. Hold my hand. Good. Okay, Let's if it causes you any pain, tell us to stop and we will, all right? Okay, ready, set, slide. Oh, <laughs> Okay. okay. Margaret, oh. could you open your eyes for me, please? We're going to put a plastic collar on your neck just to be very safe. And we're going to take you to Cambridge, Adamux Hospital. Oh, okay. Well done, Mr. Armstrong. Let's just try and get her a mobilised There you go, they're just wrapping you up now. Tell the little boys and girls oh, to mask that not to worry. Huh? Yeah, matches. I know you are. You're toughy, I can see that. I don't want to mask there. No, you already know, I promise. She was playing squash this morning. In Margaret's age, uh, these type of injuries could, could seriously limit the quality of life that she has because she's a very active lady. Uh, I sincerely hope that uh, that that will not be the case. When can I have a cup of tea? When can we have not at the moment, but soon, we promise, okay? Soon. Is Prince William driving? He's not today, I'm sorry to tell you. But don't tell anyone I told you this, OK? Because I'm not supposed to. I'm always really sorry to disappoint everybody that it's not him. <laughs> the team have been on scene for half an hour, and Peter's keen to get Margaret to hospital. OK, guys, can we move her, please? Bricks. Slowly does it. OK, this way. One, two, three, lift. Perfect. Yes, hello, we're bringing in a patient who is 78 years old and she's got leg and chest injuries and will be arriving in about 20 minutes. Just have a really good check, make sure you're, because it's quite dark. Yeah. Clear left, make sure you're in. All good, good. Oh, good. Thank you. That's good. Flying at night, obviously you can't really see where you're going. You've got to rely more on your instruments. It's all about teamwork, it's all about communications. Can you see the helipad lights now? There's three green lights just alongside that strip of street lights. See? Yeah, that's yeah. the helipad. Sit there, thanks yeah. very much. Okay, 30 seconds to landing. Okay, uh, surely to turn right. Echo Alpha, Angry One, at the pad at Adamuxa. I have to be taken off at 8.30. I need to hear that, Peter. Yeah, yeah. that would be quick. Okay, Maybe let's roll the trolley. A little bit more. Let's go. So this lady is Margaret. She was involved in a multi-car RTC. She might have some left-sided rib fractures, yeah. possible sternal fracture, and a possible broken ankle with some soft tissue injuries at the ankle and at the knee. So Come to the end of the duty period for us and the pilot. The pilot hours are quite strict. He absolutely has to be back on the ground at Norwich Airport by nine o'clock. So that's the rush that we're in now. You take care of yourself. Thanks. Bye bye, Margaret. While the team hurry back to base, Margaret's injuries will be fully assessed before she heads to theatre for surgery on her ankle. Well, well done for making it back. Welcome aboard this flight to Norwich International Airport. Take a five hour from Cambridge. Hi, I'm losing my leg. This job is great. I'm, I'm really enjoying doing this flight. It's interesting, it's a reward, you don't know where you're going. Yeah. You've got, it's a sort of problem solving. I enjoy all that stuff. Hang in there, mate, you're doing grand. Um, Terry, have you got the blood there?
I suffered multiple fractures in my pelvis, 17 fractures in my forearm and right hand. I completely shredded my bladder, prostate and urethra. Very good to be at home, but you realise just how much things have changed. The Air Ambulance being able to carry blood, I think, is a, a lifesaver. Had it not been for them, it would have been a different outcome. I love my job in pre-hospital care. We're constantly pushing the boundaries and always developing the service for the benefit of the patients. Long day, isn't it? <laughs> it, is, isn't it? <laughs> it is really a long yeah. day. What are you doing tomorrow? We're back here at 7 o'clock tomorrow morning to do it all again. When can I have a cup of tea? When can we have not at the moment, <laughs> but soon, we <laughs> promise. Good night, Okay. This is going to be a sick shot. Okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Clear, shocking. I checked my phone and there was a message on there saying, I think I'm dying, I love you. What can you say to somebody who saved your life? I am so thankful to everybody who's done all these things for me. You know, we have a huge debt to people we don't know, to people we've never met. It's just amazing. I do feel like I've had a second chance in life from trying to be a better person, even though my wife doesn't actually think I've managed that yet. <laughs> We're working on it. <laughs> At the end of a shift, if you, if you found that one of the patients uh, survived against the odds and it's a happy story, then it's a wonderful feeling. It's brilliant. Uh, it's difficult to compare it to anything else. <laughs>